last section we had uh, understood about various muscles of facial expression i am trying to continue the same topic and uh, let us try to finish off this within the first half an hour and after that we are going to continue with gametogenesis lecture so two parts we are trying to fit in today so try to be present uh, these are very important concepts all will be asked in examinations so uh, i am doing gross anatomy after completing gross anatomy we are going to do embryology as well today okay so please concentrate during the lecture and if you have any questions please stop me in between last few classes we had studied about all the muscles around the orbit nose and the oral cavity right all the muscles name of the muscles you all know by now okay some of the muscles i want you to see here this is a buccinator yesterday one of the batch has dissected parotid gland and all the facial nerve branches we had seen during the dissection and we had seen the parotid duct also the parotid duct will be piercing the buccinator and entering into the oral cavity okay so this is what you can see the buccinator you have upper fibers lower fibers and intermediate fibers in different strata buccinator will be your short note question so you will have to study that okay so these are the muscles around the oral cavity already these are all subcutaneous muscles okay below the skin and fascia within the superficial fascia there is no deep fascia remember that but here two muscles i want you to concentrate because we are dissecting the scalp and face two muscles you will come across one is the temporalis muscle this is the temporal fascia which is attached to the superior temporal line you must have dissected the scalp when reflecting the scalp on the lateral aspect we will see this fascia what you are supposed to do keep the blunt forceps beneath this temporal fascia and make a cut and reflect this temporal fascia then you will see this fan shaped muscle okay temporalis this is the muscle called as temporalis and then this muscle which you are seeing on the lateral aspect of the mandible this is also see you can see the tendinous origin and insertion of these two muscles okay from the zygomatic bone and zygomatic arch we get this muscle this is called as masseter okay what is this muscle called as masseter next to the masseter here we have parotid gland one of the batch had seen yesterday parotid gland parotid gland and the masseter together okay are covered by deep fascia which is the extension coming from the neck into the face rest of the face doesn't have deep fascia only the masseter and the parotid gland are covered by deep fascia so that's why when you are dissecting you will not see these two structures directly we have to clear the fascia then only we can see the muscle as well as the parotid gland clearly okay so what is that fascia called as parotido masseteric fascia okay now on the lateral aspect what muscles we can see these muscles are called as muscles of mastication you will study that later again right now since you are going for dissection you need to know this this is called as these are called as muscles of mastication mastication means chewing okay chewing chewing food so temporalis and the masseter muscle now forget about these two we are concentrating only muscles of facial expression these muscles are important for movement of the jaw of course these muscles are also helpful for giving certain expressions with movement of the jaw okay so this is the buccinator muscle you can see the origin of buccinator from the terigo mandibular raphe this is the white line what you can see is called as terigo mandibular raphe you will study this when you are studying bones osteology well okay so that's why right now don't worry about it what is terigo mandibular raphe this is a ligament which is coming from the pterygoid process pterygoid hamulus to the mandible terigo mandibular raphe from there anteriorly we get origin of buccinator okay and posteriorly we have superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx these two take common origin from pterygo mandibular raphe 
insertion of buccinator it goes into upper fibers lower fibers and wraps along with orbicularis oris right so these are the muscles now right now let us understand the nerve supply already we know what are the muscles of facial expression names of the muscles of facial expression now nerve supply now nerve supply i am doing it nerve supply of face it's a short note question now nerve supply of the face you have two parts one is sensory nerve supply and motor innervation motor innervation when i am saying motor innervation that means the nerve which is supplying the muscles for its contraction what is the motor nerve of the face facial nerve okay what is facial nerve facial nerve is a cranial nerve which cranial nerve it is it is the seventh cranial nerve okay what is facial nerve facial nerve is a seventh cranial nerve so see here once cranial nerve coming out of the cranial cavity it enters into the parotid gland okay within the substance of the parotid gland we can see the parotid uh, the facial nerve entering into the parotid gland and here it divides into upper and lower divisions from this divisions within the parotid gland it divides into number of branches you see the branches yesterday in dissection we had dissected these branches we had seen five branches okay what are the five branches we will see once again all of you look at the video okay look at the video okay are you able to see or are you able to see me all of you yes ma'am yes, right so when you are looking when you are studying facial nerve always remember to keep your hand on one side okay so this is how we are going to study facial nerve how we are going to study facial nerve the thumb on your temple okay index finger on the zygomatic bone cheek bones okay middle finger on the buccal cavity lower finger on the mandible and last okay that is your uh, little finger on the neck Okay, so like this. This is how we keep our hand and learn the facial nerve. How do we learn the facial nerve? Facial nerve enters into the parotid gland and divides into five terminal branches. Facial nerve has got so many branches. Right now we have five terminal branches. What are the five terminal branches? The first one, temporal branch. Okay, you can see in this picture also the temporal branch. Okay, which is going above, supplying to the frontal bellies. Okay, already we had studied in the scalp also. In scalp, we. Yeah, I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you. Okay, this is a temporal branch. Temporal branch supplies what? Supplies the scalp, occipital frontalis muscles. Frontal bellies are innervated by the, innervated by what? innervated by the temporal branch okay you can see the temporal branch yesterday we had seen this we have dissected this right along with which artery you will find this temporal branch anyone from yesterday's batch along with which artery you had seen this temporal branch superficial temporal artery excellent okay so if i have to clear out this nerve i'll go for the immediate structure which is the immediate structure we have superficial temporal artery here so we had seen the parotid gland the margin of the parotid gland and here we had seen superficial temporal artery coming out and from superficial temporal artery we could trace out this temporal branch okay so this is a temporal branch of the facial nerve next what is the next one zygomatic branch okay this is a zygomatic branch okay you can see the zygomatic branch supplying to the muscles which are in and around the eyes nose and upper part of the lip okay so this is a zygomatic branch then we have buccal branch okay now see here buccal nerves buccal nerves what happens is here also in this picture we did not we could not show that branches along the parotid duct what did we do yesterday we have cleaned the anterior border of parotid gland 
we had seen the parotid duct okay above and below the parotid duct we had seen the buccal nerves buccal nerves it's not a single branch one branch goes above the parotid duct one branch goes below the parotid duct okay this is called as upper buccal and below the one which which is which goes below the parotid duct is called as lower buccal nerve okay so upper buccal and lower buccal branches of the facial nerve how to identify them how will you identify you see the parotid duct above the parotid duct and below the parotid duct we get upper buccal and lower buccal branches respectively clear till here everyone yes ma'am yes ma'am okay now what else you will see you will see the one which is going down okay the mandibular nerve okay so the nerve which is going along the margin of the mandible so this is called as marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve okay so this is the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve the last one the one which is going down supplying the platysma muscle of the neck platysma is also subcutaneous muscle just like the muscles of the face okay so that nerve is supplying the platysma muscle so this is called as cervical branch yesterday we had seen that cervical branch all these branches we had seen okay so facial nerve after entering into the parotid gland how how you should write your answer motor innervation of the face okay motor innervation of the face that is nerve supplied to the muscles of facial expression the nerve facial nerve enters into the parotid gland and divides into five terminal branches what are the five terminal branches temporal zygomatic buccal again in buccal we have upper buccal and lower buccal and marginal mandibular and cervical okay so five terminal branches of the facial nerve supply the muscles of the facial expression till here everyone clear yes yes ma'am ma now see before entering into the parotid gland this is not the motor nerve supply of the face but you should remember since we are talking about facial nerve before entering into the parotid gland the facial nerve gives off two branches posterior auricular branch do you remember posterior auricular branch supplying the occipital bellies of the pronto occipitalis muscle okay so you see posterior auricular nerve and nerve to the posterior belly of digastric this is another muscle another nerve so these two branches also we will see once the facial nerve emerges out of the cranial cavity okay that we will study when we are doing skull and the facial nerve in detail so right now under nerve supply of the face or nerves supplying the muscles of facial expression you are supposed to remember how facial nerve enters into the parotid gland divides into two branches from the two uh, two divisions you get five terminal branches five terminal when i am stressing on the word terminal that means there are other branches also for the facial nerve these are the last branches of the facial nerve what are the five terminal branches temporal zygomatic buccal buccal has got upper buccal lower buccal marginal mandibular and cervical okay they innervate the muscles of facial expression everyone clear till here yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am okay now see the actions of the muscles okay occipital frontalis right okay you see corrugated supercilii okay procerus plus transverse part of the nasalis you can see the muscles contracting orbicularis oculi okay orbicularis oculi again there are two parts of orbicularis oculi three parts basically what we can see orbital part when it is involved we have deep constriction of the eye okay tight closure of the eye whereas light closure of the eye requires only palpebral part of the orbicularis oculi okay now we have what else we have we have got levator palpebrae superioris aliqui nasi alar part of the nose that means whenever we raise our nose like this okay so we get nasolabial folds the picture is not clear here 
okay you can see in your textbooks also gives this pictures okay then you have this uh, buccinator and orbicularis oris see here puckering of the mouth okay like this puckering of the mouth and blowing air okay into the oral cavity this requires buccinator and orbicularis oris okay zygomaticus major and minor of one side when it is contracting you can see the raising of upper lip on one side this is rhizorius rhizorius is the muscles of the angle remember along with the platysma rhizorius okay when it contracts you can see that the angle is stretched on both sides okay rhizorius plus depressor labia inferior single muscle is not acting you have always co combination of the muscles okay so this is how you can see depressor labia inferior is the lower lip okay when it is going back you can see the depressor labia inferior is levator labia superior is and depressor labia inferior is okay this is the action you can see that okay whenever we are in anger and all we can show this action okay when both the lips are going backwards so you can see both the muscles are acting together and all these actions whatever you can see here this is basically uh you can see orbicularis oris depressor angli oris mentalis okay and platysma you can see the neck fold also no one will ask you to uh, write in exam all this actions okay right. you just have to understand the actions only what is important orbicularis oris buccinator and orbicularis ocular three muscles actions are also important okay till here everyone clear yes ma'am okay same thing muscles of facial expression now nerve supply of the face we have studied motor nerve supply motor innervation now we are going to study sensory nerve supply okay nerve supply question comes nerve supply of the face question comes you are supposed to write in two parts okay if only you write nerve supply only sensory or only motor you are going to get only half marks okay so you need to write both the nerve supply sensory as well as motor very important question you can mark 10 star marks next to this question very important question okay so nerve supply has got two parts motor innervation and sensory innervation already motor innervation we did under sensory innervation what else we will see we will see see here face can be divided into three regions okay the colors three colors are given you can draw this draw face side view okay how to draw simple lines one line along the lateral angle of the eye lateral angle of the nose and the tip of the nose next line starting from the middle of this line okay and going to the lateral angle of the mouth and the third line in front of the ear excluding the angle of the mandible please remember that this area is not innervated by the trigeminal nerve okay so this is re removed rest of the area of the chin and mandibular region okay so this uh, these three lines are very important so next homework for you okay again you all have to draw the diagrams and write down nerve supply and blood supply of the face write down as a short note question blood supply nerve supply of the face draw neat labeled diagrams okay write as a short note question okay draw diagrams along with the question and submit in your google classroom the link will be provided today okay right that's your homework now see here what is the sensory innervation you will see that trigeminal nerve is innervating the sensory innervation of the face what do you mean by sensory innervation sensory innervation means the sensations are carried back from ear to the central nervous system okay right so what sensations touch pain temperature all these sensations are carried back to the central nervous system that is called as sensory innervation okay before we had studied motor motor means what the nerve supply to the muscle for the contraction of the muscle 
okay this is for sensory innervation supplying to the skin and fascia okay so what are the sensory innervation trigeminal nerve supplies to the face okay which nerve trigeminal nerve what is trigeminal nerve at see here you can see here okay roman letter 5 okay what do you mean by roman letter 5 it is a fifth cranial nerve trigeminal nerve is a fifth cranial nerve why we are saying trigeminal can you hear me hello yes ma'am yes can you see the presentation no, no ma'am no ma'am okay can you all see the presentation yes ma'am yes ma'am so trigeminal nerve when we say tri tri means three divisions okay what are the three divisions now same thing just like facial nerve we said five terminal branches this trigeminal nerve say we say three divisions okay once again i'm showing you everyone see my picture see my video you can see trigeminal okay trigeminal refers to three divisions what are the three divisions of the almic refers to the eye maxillary maxillary area this whole area is called as maxillary area this whole is the mandibular area so there are three divisions for the trigeminal nerve okay what are the three divisions ophthalmic division maxillary division mandibular division okay so what are the three divisions ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular nerves okay so these divisions of the trigeminal nerve are innervating the face okay sensory nerve supply to the face now remember that there are branches for each of this what are the branches branches try to see in your pictures if you have textbooks with you open your textbook and try to open that and try to see the pictures okay so what are the features what are the branches you have to write the name of the branch whenever you are writing the sensory innervation you are supposed to write the name of the nerves okay what are the nerves from here you get supra trochlear supra orbital have you heard these nerves before yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am what are these nerves what are these nerves sensory nerves sensory supply of the scalp yes sensory innervation to the scalp so same nerves supply the forehead also okay so we have supra trochlear supra orbital okay two branches right all of you clear till here yes ma'am yes ma'am okay we don't have that picture but you all can open that a uh, nerve supply diagram in your textbooks and see that picture all of you if you have textbook we have the nerves location of the nerves and name of the nerves which is not represented in this diagram you are supposed to learn the name of the nerves also okay supra trochlear supra orbital okay you are supposed to draw this diagram and send me right all of you clear yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma Ex external, external nasal or dorsal nasal, okay, dorsal nasal, okay. Here we have dorsal nasal, infra trochlear, okay, infra trochlear. We have supra trochlear, we have infra trochlear, supra orbital, dorsal nasal, okay. and the last branch here on this corner we have lacrimal lacrimal so total five branches of ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve supply this region this green colored area what are the five branches supra trochlear supra orbital dorsal nasal infra trochlear and lacrimal okay we will trace them back into the orbit later we will study how this ophthalmic nerve is coming into the orbit and then giving off all this five branches later we will study right now just understand what are the names of these branches okay once again i am repeating 
supratrochlear, supraorbital, lacrimal, infratrochlear, and external nasal or dorsal nasal. Okay, so these are the five branches of ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve. Okay, then goes to the next one that is maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. Maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. We have infraorbital. Okay, supraorbital is a branch of ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve. Whereas infraorbital is a branch of maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. Okay, infraorbital. All of you clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and here we have which bone? We have got zygomatic bone. Okay, zygomatic bone use of branches. Which branches? Zygomaticofacial nerve and zygomaticotemporal nerve. Okay, zygomaticofacial, which is supplying the face. Zygomaticotemporal, which supplies to the zygomatic and the temporal aspect of the face. Okay. So, what are the three branches of maxillary division of trigeminal nerve? Infra orbital, zygomatico facial, and zygomatico temporal. The direction of the nerves is also important. Okay, when I when you are drawing zygomatico facial, it should come downwards. Zygomatico temporal, it should go upwards. Okay. That is the three branches of maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. Then comes the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. Mandibular also has got three branches. What are the three branches? Are you all all of you with me, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So at this region, we have got auriculotemporal nerve. Okay, it supplies to the auricular region and the temporal region. Have you heard this auriculotemporal nerve before? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Zygomatico temporal nerve before? Yes, ma'am. Yes. See, all of these are going to the scalp and supplying the scalp as well. Okay, so the same nerves. Okay, so what are the branches till now we studied? Mandibular division, auriculotemporal, zygomatico temporal. And zygomatico facial is here. Zygomatico temporal and facial is on the maxillary division. Here in the mandibular division area, we have auriculotemporal at this region, buccal, buccal nerve. Guys, with star marks, I am telling you, this is the buccal branch of mandibular division of trigeminal nerve, which is sensory nerve. Highlighting again, sensory nerve. Before we had studied buccal branch of facial nerve, that is a motor nerve. Remember that five branches, buccal branch, that buccal branch is a motor nerve, supplies to a muscle. This buccal nerve, this is a buccal branch of mandibular division of trigeminal nerve. It supplies to the buccal region, okay, right? Buccal branch of mandibular division of trigeminal nerve. It's a sensory nerve. It carries only sensory innervations. Okay. And then the last one, mental nerve. Okay. Supplying to the skin of the chin. Mental nerve. Till here, everyone clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mandibular area, we have got auriculotemporal branch buccal branch and the mental branch. These are the three branches of mandibular division of trigeminal nerve supplying the this region of the face. Okay. And the angle of the face, see your angle, angle of the jaw. This region is the only area which is innervated by the cervical plexus. From the neck we get that cervical plexus. It is not supplied by the trigeminal nerve. From the neck, we get cervical plexus. Okay, great auricular nerve. Have you heard this great auricular nerve before? Yes, ma'am. Right? 
we study great auricular nerve which is supplying the posterior aspect behind the ear nerves right so that great auricular nerve gives anterior branch and the posterior branch okay so this anterior branch supplies to the skin on the angle of the mandible okay right so all this you have to remember nerve supply of the face you have to write sensory nerve supply and motor innervation under sensory innervation we write trigeminal nerve ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular divisions you draw the diagram you show what is the territory of this three divisions and you are supposed to write the name of the branches okay and don't forget this angle of the mandible region because this is also coming under the face okay it comes under the cervical plexus great auricular nerve c2 c3 okay so this is the nerve supply of the face everyone clear with the nerve supply of the face yes ma'am yes ma'am now very quickly we will go through bell's palsy whenever you are talking about nerve supply of the face or muscles of the face facial expression the clinical applied aspect what you write is bell's palsy what is palsy palsy means paralysis okay palsy means paralysis what is paralysis when the muscle cannot contract it is called as palsy or paralysis okay when does muscle cannot contract when there is injury to the nerve okay so when there is nerve injury you have paralysis paralysis is there is no contraction of the muscle right till here everyone clear yes ma'am yes. um, bell's palsy bell is the surgeon who has given the name to this paralysis okay identify what is the root cause of this paralysis that's why we name this facial nerve lesion as bell's palsy okay now see here any nerve which is supplying to the muscles okay they are coming from where coming from either from the brain stem or the spinal cord okay but from here also this region brain stem or spinal cord it is getting information from where from the higher centers from the brain so these nerves supply to this uh, nerves over here this neurons here and these neurons supply to the muscles okay this is how a motor pathway is present so any motor nerves you take there are two types of nerves here one is coming from the higher center to the lower center what are the lower centers lower centers are present in the brain stem for the cranial nerves lower centers are present in the spinal cord for the spinal nerves okay so that is what you have to remember so these nerves are called as upper motor neurons and the ones which are going to the muscles are called as lower motor neurons okay bell's palsy bell's palsy separately short note question can come you are supposed to write this what is bell's palsy okay how does it happen it can happen because of upper motor neuron paralysis or lower motor neuron paralysis when upper motor neuron paralysis happens because the fibers are crossing and going to the opposite side see here upper motor neurons are crossing and going to the opposite side what is happening if there is injury in the brain opposite side of the face is getting paralyzed okay so if there is one side a uh, nuclear lesion that is one side of the brain injury opposite side of the face is getting paralyzed okay this is called as contralateral paralysis clear are you guys here with me what is contralateral paralysis yes ma'am yes yes contralateral means opposite side okay when we will see contralateral paralysis when upper motor neurons are injured that means when there is a brain stroke okay blood supply is gone or an accident or as an aneurysm so these neurons are affected that time opposite side of the face is injured okay or paralyzed so this is called as contralateral paralysis okay as a dentist you might see many cases where you have bell's palsy okay in you see lower motor neuron paralysis if there is lower motor neuron paralysis then same side of the face is paralyzed okay 
this is called as ipsilateral okay spelling is here ipsilateral ipsilateral means on the same side paralysis all of you are here here with me ipsilateral means on the same side contralateral means on the opposite side you are supposed to write both these conditions okay how do we know which is ipsilateral a patient comes to you with bell's palsy what are the features you can see what are the features facial muscles are not contracting okay so you see here when you ask a patient to smile okay only one side goes up the other side doesn't go this side of the face is paralyzed okay so this is a typical condition where you can see bell's palsy when you ask a patient to close the eye close orbicularis oculi okay only one side the person can close the other side cannot be closed completely okay this is how a typical patient can be seen okay these are the phenotypical characteristic features when you see a patient with bell's palsy now how do you know which is ipsilateral or contralateral paralysis how do you know whether it is upper motor neuron injury or lower motor neuron injury how do you know that if upper motor neuron is injured the forehead is spared because in forehead area both sides are innervating okay both side nerves are innervating the forehead so only the patient comes with lower half of the face